when does the narcissist game finally end? Does it ever end? I'm going to tell you when it ends. It does end. And I'm going to tell you how it finally comes to an end in this video. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Rebecca Zong. I'm an attorney. I am a narcissist negotiation expert. And in these videos, I teach you how to negotiate with them in a way that's powerful so that you take back your control and you actually end up getting rid of the fear. It is possible. And if that sounds good to you, make sure you hit that subscription bell, subscribe and stick around because I give you free tips and tricks. What other lawyer does that? Nobody does that. So stick around and you might actually learn something. So anyway, let's talk about when that game finally ends for that narcissist. And it does happen. And you guys, there are many of you out there that are thinking it never ends. It just never ends. And it does feel that way sometimes because they're in this thing. And, and, I know what happens with you guys, right? You, they, they traumatize you, they use you, they abuse you. And, you know, they start off with this, you know, super charming personality, by the way. And you wouldn't have gotten sucked in had they not been super charming. I mean, come on, you're not stupid. I, I can't tell you how many people have come through the doors of my office and have said, I'm really smart in, in all these other areas of my life. You know, I mean, people who have been super successful, I have sucked in too. You know, I, I don't think of myself as being like, you know, a loser or anything like that. I mean, I hope not. And, but yet here I am, I got sucked into the whole thing too, because, you know, they're really good at what they do. They're master manipulators. They, they know what to do to suck people in. They prey on people. And by the way, they didn't attach themselves to you because you had so little value. They attached themselves to you because you have so much. They're, they're not trying to suck narcissistic supply out of the people that have no value. Where's the value in that? They want the people that have the value. They want the supply. They're going for the, the juicy thing. You know, you know, think about those lions or the tires or the, pe you know, the, the vultures. Vultures is probably a better thing. I actually like lions and tigers. Let's, let's talk about vultures. So, you know, the vultures, they're looking for the carcasses that actually still have something left on the bones, right? That's what narcissists want too. They, they want something that has some meat on the bones, something that's good, something that has like, you know, something to go for. Okay. So think about that. Even though they come along and they start devaluing you, that's like the smoke and mirrors thing that they do. They, they come along, you've got value. Then they start shifting it around and make you think that you have none, even though you have all the value. It's like kind of crazy, but it is, it's a whole toxic stew thing that they do. And they really get off on you know, making themselves feel more powerful over somebody that has a lot of power. I mean, just think like the whole Britney Spears thing, right? I mean, her dad is probably a narcissist and he's like loving the fact that he's got power over somebody who has like this level of celebrity. So therefore she's got some amount of power because she's got this celebrity and he's got power over her, you know, with this conservatorship. So, you know, that's what they do. This whole love bomb, devalue, discard, the whole toxic stew in between. So when you're negotiating with them, it feels like it's never going to end. And the more personal it is with the negotiations, the worse that it is because they know how to trigger you and they don't want it to end. And, and here's the, the big mistake that people make going into the negotiations is you think, what is it that they want? I'll just give it to them so I can be done with this thing. And the problem with that whole flaw 
in the thinking, the very big, huge flaw in the thinking is that what they want is not to be done. What they want is to jerk you around. What they want is to manipulate you. What they want is to intimidate you. I mean, you think, oh, maybe they just want me to die, but that's not what they want either because then there would be no more supply left to be had. What they want is for it to keep going. It's like the Barney song that never ends. You know, this is the song that never ends. Uh, they, they want you to constantly feel manipulated. They literally get off on that. And that's why they continuously move goalposts. They'll give you an offer. And even if you take the offer, They'll say, oh, no, the, the offer has changed. The, the, the deal is different now. Oh, I'll take the parts of the deal that, that I like, but not the parts that, you know, I don't like. And I have a whole video on that, by the way, if you want to check it out, why narcissists constantly move goalposts, which you can definitely watch if, you, if you'd like. That's why the fees are like four times higher for, you know, litigation when narcissists are involved, you know, average cases without narcissists, or, you know, you can actually settle because there's something that somebody wants. And there's like the whole, oh, you can, uh, I'll trade this for that. And you, oh, this sounds good. And, you know, we can actually come to some kind of a conclusion. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. I mean, you can have those kinds of rational conversations when, rational people are involved, but not when narcissists are involved. I mean, I had a client one time, total narcissist, by the way, who would actually say to things to me like, oh, I'd rather pay you than her. Okay. And I used to say to him, this is before I actually knew that he was a narcissist and, you know, understood what was going on, that I was actually a pawn in his little scheme to intimidate and annoy the, the wife, you know, I used to say, Hey, you know, I don't need you to help me put my daughter through college. You know, we, we can actually get this thing done. And, and he would do things just to annoy her. Like one time he signed a support check with his left hand. He was right-handed. He signed it with his left hand in crayon with just, you know, his first name, just because he thought it was funny. And of course, that became like the centerpiece of the other side's trial exhibits. And by the way, remember that anything you put your hand to is a potential trial exhibit. So that like didn't look so great for my client, by the way. But, you know, he didn't even care because he thought it was funny. But that's the kind of thing we're talking about. It goes on forever because now she has to file a motion to compel. Now she has to like, she didn't get her support check because of course the bank didn't cash it. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. It goes on and on the, Bar the Barney song, but there you go. So what worries them? When will it end? When will it end? It will end when they are going to be potentially exposed because what there's a hierarchy of supply and what drives a narcissist is supply. That's it. There's only one thing. However, there are different types of supply for a narcissist. So, you know, think about the vulture. So there might be like a better form of roadkill. So like there might be better roadkill up the road than down here. And so, oh, if there's better roadkill up there, then I might go over there. But hey, there might be still some roadkill left over here. So let me just make sure that and I've gotten all the roadkill there is left over here. So if there's a little roadkill left over here, then I'm, I might, you know, make sure I've gotten it all over here. So you know, exposing them or threatening to expose them is the best way to potentially make them feel like, you know what, it ain't worth it being over here anymore. I'd rather move on to the next form of supply. And that's why it's really, really important to develop a strategy. You know, I talk about this in my slay program, strategy, leverage, anticipate, focus on you. That's the only way. Supply is what drives them. And if you don't develop that strategy, you don't have that leverage, you don't anticipate what they're going to do. You don't focus on you, your case, your position. 
you ain't going to get there. But once you do, you will. It uh, will 100% work. It absolutely will. When there's no more supply left to be had on your side of the equation, they will slither on down the road and that game will finally come to an end. But then and only then will it come to an end. That's how it works. That's how it will come to an end. They have to worry that they're going to be exposed or they have to think that there's no more left. There's no more supply left to be had because if there's any little like bones to pick and that's why they come back by the way. And they, you know, they, you get that little ping in your DM, you get that little thing, you get that, that little email or that little, Oh, let's see if there's something to be had over there or that you get that little thing to try to trigger you. Um, maybe they, they miss a payment or something like that just to see, is there, is there some supply left to be had over there? Is there something I can get and a little rise I can have over there? Because they want to see if they're testing, they're testing to see if there's something that they can, I can get out of this. And if you know that I'm true, if you know that these people are t total vultures, give me a vultures in the comments right now, because you know that they are vultures. All right. If you're getting ready to negotiate with anyone, grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. I am so ready to help you win and join my free private Facebook group at Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And like this video, give it a like, give it a share. And I am so glad that you are here and I am so glad that you are part of this community because we are taking those narcissists down together. We shall rise. And thanks so much for stopping by. Remember, today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in the next video.